Welcome to this video on the comparison of small turbines with the large turbines. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better more sustainable world so please do subscribe to our channel. By the end of this video you will be able to work out which turbines are more efficient so let's begin. Small scale wind turbines that is 10 kilowatt capacity or less are an enigma. They have their uses particularly in off-grid applications they can be used in remote locations and even offshore on boats. They can help charge batteries and can be used for pumping water. Due to their smaller size, their transportation, installation and commissioning costs are low. The low cost of these turbines make them affordable to small communities as well as individuals. However, there are question marks over the effectiveness of these turbines, particularly when compared to their large-scale counterparts. The peak efficiency of a very well designed small scale turbine can reach 35% but it rarely does so. Whereas for larger turbines, figures of around 40% are more commonly noted. Although the difference might not look very alarming, but it should be emphasized that peak efficiency for small scale turbine is reached only for a fraction of the time when operating in the field. Whereas large scale turbines can reach their peak efficiency fairly regularly and can sustain it for long duration and hence the yield is much better. In 2008, just when several small scale turbine companies had mushroomed, research by Academia proved that contrary to the manufacturer's claim, most of the small scale wind turbines were inefficient and this led the UK government to promptly tighten the incentives and grants for many of these machines. The slash of grant shrunk the market which in turn hit the small turbine manufacturers really hard. Many of these turbine makers with smaller pockets did not survive the curb. So what are the reasons that make small scale wind turbines much less feasible compared to their large scale counterparts? Let's look at a few of them right now. Reason number one is the gearing system. In most small scale wind turbines, the gearbox is absent. They have to spin at a certain speed for producing electricity that can be fed to the grid. When spinning at slower speeds, they only produce power that can trickle charge a battery. Because of the lack of a gearing system, the generator shaft cannot be stepped up to a higher speed at the expense of torque. Whereas most large scale wind turbines come with a gearbox. In fact, the majority of the maintenance and insurance costs are due to the presence of a gearbox in the large scale wind turbine. If the gearbox is absent, such as in direct drive turbines, then their absence is compensated by power capacitors and other power electronics. The reason number two is the fatigue due to high speed spin. Because small scale wind turbines are designed to spin at high speed, they clock many more revolutions over a period of time compared to large scale wind turbines. This results in a shorter bearing life and quicker sharing of blades. Large scale wind turbines on the other hand are designed to spin slow at about 15 to 20 RPM, thus decreasing wear and tear and increasing longevity. Reason number three is the yaw system in the nacelle. Horizontal axis wind turbines need to have their blades oriented perpendicular to the direction of wind. Computerized and active yaw systems in large scale wind turbines provide this functionality. In small scale wind turbine, the yaw systems are passive. A tail blade orients the turbine in the direction of the wind. It is a cost effective solution, but one that comes at the expense of yield. Passive yaw systems have to be designed with care so that they are to some degree insensitive to sudden fluctuations in wind direction as the gyroscopic loads increase. Active yaw systems on the larger wind turbines are controlled by yaw motors which are in turn controlled by an onboard computer. The algorithms for yaw control can even anticipate wind direction changes through software or measure them through lidars and this information can be used to increase the productivity of the turbine. Reason number four is the mast height. Small wind turbines are mounted on masts that are about 10 meters long. Although there are certain small turbines that come with telescopic masts that give them a relatively higher height. A look at the atmospheric boundary layer suggests that the wind speed goes up exponentially 
when we move vertically away from the land surface. Larger wind turbines have nacelles sitting at 50 meters height or more, thus cutting into wind at much higher speeds. As the power of the turbine has a cubic relationship with wind speed, the output of these larger machines goes up in the same proportion. Smaller mast heights also mean a lot more turbulence is faced by the small-scale wind turbines due to obstacles near the ground such as trees and buildings. Reason number five is the blade pitch control. Large-scale wind turbines can vary their blade pitch. The altering of the blade angle can be used to maximize the lift force on the blades at different wind speeds. The blade angle can also be changed to minimize the lift and drag during gales or stormy wind conditions. This reduction of the angle of attack in high wind conditions is termed as feathering. Small-scale wind turbines do not have such mechanisms to turn the blades. They normally apply brakes and completely stop at high wind speeds. So let's sum up all that we have learned. Unless the technology of large-scale wind turbines is scaled down, the effectiveness of small wind turbines would remain second tier. As for now, there is some truth in the saying, the bigger the better. Now, having said that, there have been numerous examples where the technology from large-scale wind turbines have transcended into small-scale wind turbines. For example, the Evans 9000 wind turbine has a response blade pitch control that automatically changes the blade angle with changing wind speed. Similarly, direct drives are now available from power rating as low as 20 kilowatts. The availability of longer masts for small-scale wind turbine has also improved their effectiveness. The presence of a gearbox is hugely beneficial. However, it should be noted that most of the maintenance issues for large-scale wind turbines are due to the gearbox. Small-scale wind turbines, despite their shortcomings, have their place in the market. Numerous farmers have benefited from them for whom large-scale wind turbines would have been simply inadequate and too costly. The lack of infrastructure, wide roads, and high voltage transmission cables can make large-scale wind turbines not only unfeasible but also impractical. So in terms of efficiency, yes, large wind turbines are more efficient but small wind turbines have a place in the market. And with this, the video on small versus large turbines is concluded. If you learned from it, please do press the like button. This will help it to propagate to a wider audience. For any questions, please place them in the comment section. Thank you for your attention.